Yo, 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 what's good, people? Welcome to the channel where we talk about music licensing, music production, and music business. If you love any of the previously mentioned, be sure to subscribe so you can stay up to date on all the latest content and hit that bell icon so you know exactly when that new content drops. Shout out to everybody in the stream. Let me know where you guys are from. Let me know what you do. Um, yeah, it's, it's another Music Is My Business podcast live Q&A thing, and I'm super excited because I got another guest. You know, you know we try and bring dope people on to help you and your you know production businesses and music businesses and things like that learn how to monetize and all that dope stuff um so um yeah so today um i'm, I'm gonna bring on a super dope producer she's crushing it on social media and production and business and everything um so i'm super excited to bring um size on so let me see who i have in the chat man drop some fire emojis so i can bring her in right uh we're gonna geek out man we're gonna talk about um we're just gonna talk about what we do every day and and how you can do the same as a producer in today's industry and kind of carve out you know your own lane and, and own path and all of that stuff so it should be a dope conversation trey sean 23 from san diego what's good learning what i can that's what it's all about man immaculate beats what's good bro good to see you back in the stream um so yeah uh prince made productions i see you with the fire emoji prince is ready to get it started tyrone terman what's up pac from georgia in the building keep grinding for sure my guy malvin minor the uh <laughs> the the lead the paralegal in the building uh we had a dope conversation last week with the latte lawyer and malvin was dropping some some dope questions kim durr is in the building good morning kim Everything is good with the family. We're like, I think we're on round two of another virus or sickness. It's crazy, man. We just out here. We at war with the viruses. Um, Tracy Morris was good from Chi Town. Super dope. So listen, without further ado, man, let's get it. I see the fire emoji, so I don't want to keep her holding. So sides, what's up? How you feeling? Good. How are you? Thanks for I, having me indeed indeed um say something else i think your audio was like doing something weird again we oh no do. can you hear me now i see the green it's like a i see the i hear you but then when you talk it's like a it's like a staticky sound when you talk it's crazy Let me try putting on headphones. okay <clears throat> kid stone i see you in the building with the fire emojis welcome uh is that better no, it's still doing the same thing. Oh, no. Te technology, technology won't let us be great. It's all good. We'll figure it out. Um, let's see. Let me make sure it's not on my end. I checked. Let me see. Enable. I don't think that. I don't think that do it. Does anything? Okay. Try one more time. Um, hello. Is this better? Yes. Boom. That works. This is better. Yeah. 
Yep, I can definitely hear you. Can y'all hear? Thumbs up if you guys can hear size because we don't want to miss these gems. He's going to drop. <clears throat> yeah, Prince May. We restarted. We restarted the interface. Like we were on the show before, like tweaking stuff, trying to get audio right. So. But is it okay now? Yeah, yeah. It sounds dope now. Prince okay. May said loud and clear. Yes. Okay, Okay, dope. So listen, Size, I appreciate you coming on. How have you been? How's your week been so far? Let us it's know. Been, it's been good. Can't complain. Staying busy. Mm -hmm. So no complaints so far. <laughs> Super dope. So listen, man, tell tell the people, uh tell the people about you, like how you got started in in production and just yeah, where where did the, the journey begin for you? Yeah, so for me, I was working as a singer and had plans to go on cruise ships again with a girl group in, you know, 2020. <laughs> so we were going to, about to go on a cruise ship um, and do guest entertaining. So I built a whole show. It was a lot of work, blood, sweat, and tears for over two years. Made all these arrangements, all these costumes, yada, 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 full nine yards. And then, as we all know, 2020 didn't turn out as planned yeah, shut <laughs> so everything, e everything got canceled so that business like completely failed i was gutted sitting at home sorry no it's good gutted sitting at home um totally depressed i spent six months you know waiting for things to come back waiting okay cruise kept getting delayed kept getting delayed kept getting delayed and then eventually i was like this isn't happening anytime soon was just scrolling on facebook and on facebook someone was like oh uh learn how to produce in 30 days and i was like this is stupid i went to berkeley for vocal performance i didn't learn how to produce then nice. and this is not going to happen right so mm -hmm. click on the thing anyways there's a sale so i was like you know what i'm just sitting at home with my dog my boyfriend at the time was working full time so i was just literally by myself all day every day <laughs> i had read like 20 books i was like i need to do something different so started this production class just like you know one of those recorded classes that you spend 30 days just like watching and creating and i became obsessed like I, right away i was like yes i'm super into this and for me it was just like once i figured out how to learn um how to how to program a drum pattern that's when everything changed for me i was like i can do this because yeah. i'd been writing like vocal arrangements and like full shows and full things for a while but i never was producing so then that clicked and then I started posting on TikTok and then that took off and now here I am. <laughs> wow. <clears throat> That's crazy. Like first off you went to Berkeley. So shouts to you. I've uh so I I was like I'm a musician so I you know I used to play a lot like live and things like that especially in college and we were we, I was playing for like a gospel concert and Berkeley was <laughs> one of the colleges and they just completely smashed. Like they were just geniuses. It's crazy. So that's super dope. Like what how was that? Like going going to Berkeley? I mean I was so looking back, I was so young and didn't really know what I wanted to do then. Mm -hmm. Like when I went to Berkeley, all I wanted to do was be like a singer songwriter or be in a band and be like the next I don't know lady gaga i mean at that time lady gaga was still like coming up so i was like i wanted to do that and like i would i remember saying like i'm never gonna sing covers like i'm never gonna sing in a cover band and then like straight out of school i get like <laughs> working in cover bands <laughs> but it's like um yeah i mean i wish like i wish looking back i went when i felt like i knew more about like what i wanted to do and how to make it more resourceful for me because i was just singing and I didn't feel like I really needed to go to Berkeley for that. You know, yeah. like looking back, I don't, I feel like most of the stuff I learned was just like on the field or just working stuff like that. Yeah. That's super dope. Um, John Kern had a question. He wanted to know which class was it that you took when, um, in 2020? Oh, in Berkeley. So I studied vocal performance. So there was a lot of classes I had to do. Um, and I found like, because I didn't really know what I wanted to do, I, you know, I was just, I was taking ear training and counterpoint and it was just like so broad, like music is so broad, really, when you think about it, like there's so many things you can be doing and mm -hmm. things you can be learning. So I was learning all the stuff, but I've never really, 
you know, some, you know, counterpoint, actually, I, I make fun of it now because like when I was taking it, I was like, this is the stupidest thing ever. Like all this is teaching me is that I'm not Bach or I'm not Mozart. Right. Yeah. But now, like when I was writing like vocal arrangements and stuff, I was actually using some of those, you know, principles, right. but like so much of it, like it's, it's, you can be taught it, but if you're not applying it like on a daily basis, then it's not really useful. And at that time I was just singing. So right. I was like singing in like a, you know, blues rock band and we were going around and playing gigs and I was, you know, I really just wanted to sing. So looking back, I'm like, mm, I probably should have just like not gone to school or just went to a conservatory or something where it was just like more like performance based. And like when you when you're going to Berkeley for just like vocal performance, like you get a new voice teacher every semester and all the stuff. And that's not necessarily like the best thing for a singer, really, to be jumping around. So, I mean, I really loved my experience at Berkeley, but if I had a child, I probably wouldn't send them there. <laughs> Got you. If that makes sense. Yeah, indeed. Yeah, like, you know, it's, yeah, I get it. You know, um, having having an, an instructor, like an, a consistent instructor or, or mentor to learn from, I think is super important. And then, you know, a lot of times with, with the the colleges and the universities there's like a lot of extra stuff that you're taking that may not even necessarily be related to what you know what you're trying to do i think it do. i think it's really great for certain type of people but the main thing that like when people ask me like oh should i go to berkeley i say really only if you can truly afford it right because it is an expensive institution and i have friends that have toured around with very successful musicians like they played madison square garden they played you know SNL, they played everything, right? And they're still paying off Berkeley. And it's been 10 years. Wow. You know, so that's like the success stories. And I just feel like there's so many ways that you can get like a really good education other than going to an institution that's going to be, you know, you're going to have to spend so much money. I mean, like even like a $10,000 loan forgiveness for Berkeley doesn't even like <laughs> to a dent. Like yeah. that's like three months of rent to live in Boston. <laughs> like, yeah. That's yeah. it. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. So, it, hey, let me know if you guys hear, because it came back now, The like, when you talk, it does the thing. Let me know if it's just me, because oh, if it's no. just me, I can deal with it. But if the people, let me know if you guys hear it in the chat. Um, so that's that's crazy. Um, yeah. It, stuff, everything is expensive over there. Like, Jersey, Boston, New York, all of those those places in that little corner of the of the nation is just crazy um okay tracy says she heard the static again oh no okay hmm. i don't know what to do okay. i guess what did you what did you do the first the first time it fixed it when whatever you did um a couple minutes ago that fixed it i don't know why it came back let's try doing this one <clears throat> Is this better? Sorry. Okay. Yep. Is it better now? Yep. That sounds good. Okay. <laughs> Dope. So I see I see people in the chat already. And this is how I found out about you, right? Like I was just on Instagram, came across this logic pro tip, logic gang, throw up whatever emoji you want to throw up. Came across this logic tip and I was just like, yo, like it blew my mind. And that's when I first found out about you. And then I went to your page and then it was filled with these logic tips and I was just like, okay, she is logic pro 10. Like, how did you, how did you get, like, was that the first doll? Like when you took this, that production class that you mentioned, was this the first doll that you started learning how to make beats in? Yeah. So I'm like an Apple loyalist for okay. sure. I drank the the go and I started when I was doing my, um, you know, the girl group, when I was writing all the vocal arrangements, I would record into garage band. So I was already using GarageBand. And then, um, stop Leo, sorry, my dog. Leo, stop. What's up, stop. Leo? So I was recording, in <laughs> I was uh, recording into GarageBand. And then, yes, that class was like, okay, do, do Logic. And then um, Logic had a 90 day trial. I believe it still does have a 90 day trial. So I was like, you know what? I'm an Aries. I'm one of those people that like sign up for a bunch of things that don't actually follow through. <laughs> so I was like, let me just do the 90 day trial. Let me see if I'll actually continue with this. And then I got like super obsessed with the program. And I'm one of those people, like, I like to work, you know, smarter, not harder. And I like to know all the shortcuts, like every single one of the, I went crazy into 
like learning Logic Pro and like learning it like the the best, like inside and out. Yeah. And I was trying to find all these tips. And then I was posting on TikTok to kind of hold myself accountable because I was how to produce at the time. So I was like, all right, let me learn something new every day and then let me make a video about it. And if people watch it, cool. And if people don't watch it, I'm at least documenting my process, right? And then I can also refer back to my own tips. So I started posting those and those just like started taking off. And then I really started enjoying just like talking to people. Like it was amazing. I was learning how to produce and I would like go live on TikTok and I'd be troubleshooting and I'd be like, can somebody help me with this? And somebody would help me and they would just like know exactly what to do. That's crazy. And like, on top of that, I was getting like, you know, really good producers like yourself or, you know, Grammy winning producers that have been producing for a long time start following me because they haven't been like upkeeping on the the education, right? You, you know what you know and you're like, I'm cool and you're cruise yep. and you cruise for a long time. Yep. But now they're like, okay, I don't want to sit and watch a three hour YouTube video on this one tip that I might know. So, but I'll watch your 15 second video on exactly. something. So like I had even people like Phineas, like commenting on my thing, like, damn, like strip silence. I posted about strip silence and he was like, whoa. And that to me was like, that's so cool. He didn't know this tip before me. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah. And it, it, you nailed it when you said like, nobody wants to sit and watch like hours worth of tutorials on how to do something super simple that can be like you show us how to do it in like 10, 15 seconds. And that's what makes it so powerful because then you can save it. You can go back to it. Um, I was using, I'm using a loop deck. So I was able to like take the shortcut programming in a loop deck and now it's just set to one button and I press a button and it does the thing. So yeah, that's super powerful. So did you know, like when you started posting the tips, did you know what that would start to do for your brand as a producer and a, and a content well, creator? When I was at, so I'm a big nerd about social media <clears throat> a little bit, but when, once I got to the point where I was like, at that point, I had already started, like, I produced for another artist. I didn't really like that. I didn't like that. I was like, okay, what do I want to do with my career? And at that point, I really realized I love making content about music. I always be like, oh, you're just successful because you're a girl. And I'm like, no, I'm successful because I'm clear and concise, right? My videos, I make good content. So I was like, all right, I really like to do it, create content. And then I was like, I really want to work with music tech brands to create content with them. But then I also really like teaching and helping other people. Cause you know, I've had a long road in this industry and I really want to help people. And I also want to be able to like work by myself. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, okay, what can I do? So then at that moment I really decided that's what I want to do. I want to, my two goals is to build my online school where I can do these like classes mm -hmm. and then also work with music tech companies. So I started working backwards and like, obviously the dream is, you know, to work with Apple. Like Apple was like, I want to work with Apple. I want to get in with Apple, but I didn't want, don't like spamming. And like for so long in my career, I had spammed and like, Hey, can we work together? La, la, la. All that stuff like collab, la, la. you know, that didn't work out. So then I was like, all right, I'm going to post for these brands and they're going to find me. Yeah. They're going to reach out to me because people were like, Oh, you know, when the logic tapes were going viral, they, they were like, Oh, you should reach out to Apple. You know, like you've been helping them sell so much copies. I'm like, no, 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 no. They're going to come to me. Yeah. <laughs> and they did. <laughs> wow. They did. So it's like, and now I've gotten to work with so many. So I always tell people with like social media, like decide your goal and then post for the people that you would want to see your videos, like post for them. They want to see. That's a fact. Um, and it, it's so, it's so powerful. Um, you know, what, when you're focused on who you're talking to, you're able to create and speak directly to those people. And then you attract a bunch of those same types of people. And then the brands want to put their stuff in front of those same people. So it like, it's a no brainer for them to like partner up with you and, and put those products in front of the people. And you know, you end up getting free gear or sponsored content. They'll pay for the video or like whatever. And it's just, it opens you up to like this whole a whole nother lane of of just crazy to like opportunity um as a you know as a creator so that's super super dope so like how long did it take you from i guess from from the beginning of posting on tiktok and instagram to the brands and apple and stuff like that reaching out to you to, to partner up on some stuff so it wasn't it wasn't that long till people started reaching out to me <clears throat> mm -hmm. it was just like because like even before Instagram had Reels, 
people were already reaching out to me. So, I, but I really wanted to wait as long as I could to monetize. One, because I situation that I didn't really like need to be motivated by money. Yeah. And then very situation changed and I was like well time to make money I'm like time to secure the bag so that's kind of like what happened to me so for me it's like I started getting contacts like pretty quickly like a month okay. pretty much I was saying I was blown I grew up blew up kind of fast on TikTok wow. and I kind of slowed down but the, these um these algorithms are always changing right like these platforms are always changing so you just have to like pay attention to what's going on so when I was posting on TikTok they were really prioritizing education and i feel like now it's like at least with like music production education that people want to see more performances on tiktok right now mm -hmm. but then instagram they were really prioritizing education so i've been growing really fast on instagram the last few months anyways so it took me nine months to start monetizing that's pretty like dope. like making a good living yeah that's awesome. The static is back. The, the people started oh, coming. It's like the static's back. I can see it on your face, and I'm like, am I just, am I being really boring, or is it with the vibe? It's just, it's, stop, it's, it's gone now. I don't know what you just did. Okay, wait. Oh, no. <clears throat> is it better now? Yeah, that's better. That's it's good. back. Yeah. You keep just switching microphones, and then they, I don't know why it's happening. I guess we'll yeah we'll just switch we'll switch back and forth it's all good um so man that's that's dope um that's super dope and that's super fast man like TikTok is TikTok is on something else man as far as like the potential for growth when you're consistently posting content um TikTok is kind of crazy like I haven't been as consistent on TikTok as I am on Instagram but um, I'm trying to do, I'm trying to do better. I'm trying to repurpose stuff that I put on Instagram and just throw it on TikTok and stuff. So, yeah. um, that's dope. So, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I do find that like Instagram is better for like business and like community, just a little bit better, yeah. but TikTok's really good for like getting new eyes on your, on your, on you pretty yeah. much. Like an exposure play. Yeah. Yeah, cuz one I posted I posted something on TikTok <clears throat> and I had a call to action in the post to DM me for for whatever. Um and like nobody nobody knew how to DM on TikTok. So everybody was just commenting and I'm like manually trying to respond to all these comments. I was just like, "Okay, so maybe not ask people to DM you on TikTok." Yeah. You have to be like friends to DM on TikTok. Okay, makes sense. I learned that the hard way. So that's crazy. Um, so Logic, somebody asked, are you Logic Pro certified? I'm not Logic Pro certified. <laughs> she, I don't really she see is to any, us though. You're certified and I don't really see any reason to get Logic Pro certified. I'm confused by that. Cause yeah, I don't it, really get it. It doesn't seem like a lot of people check for it. You know what I mean? Like I have, I know I have a friend, a composer friend. He's, he's certified in Logic. He kind of went through the whole thing just to, I guess, just to add it to his resume for certain things that he was trying to do. But I mean, you can still accomplish, I mean, the, you're a I prime feel like example. The work is always going to speak for itself, right? right? So it's like what you know is going to always speak for yourself. Like if you're in a room full of studios that have been working 10 years and you show them something they don't know in logic it doesn't matter if you're certified or not right and yeah. same with being certified logic is updating every month that's like why it's one of my favorite dogs because it's always reinventing itself mm -hmm. so you have to still keep learning so if you were certified in 2016 it's like a almost a completely different new dog now <laughs> yeah it's a fact <clears throat> apple apple changes a lot so i'm actually i'm actually apple hardware and software certified from when I used to work in IT and they mm. literally they change like you take you take one big certification to be certified but then there's like a bunch of little mini trainings every year because they release a new product like every year or like multiple products so then you'll go and take like these little mini refresher thingies or whatever but yeah it, it's constantly changing but I, I feel like Logic is it's such a dope doll because number one 
it's not it's not super expensive. It's like two hundred dollars. There's no subs- weird subscription stuff. You just pay the two hundred dollars mm-hmm. and then you own it forever. You get all the upgrades, the updates, yeah. like forever. Um, so that's super dope, and I feel like it just has a lot of production tools um, that are that are just great um, when you're when you're producing music. And yeah, I, I love it. I mean, I definitely think <laughs> I'm biased. I think Logic is <clears throat> like the best pro doll right like i i'm a big fan of like band lab and like the ones that are free that's amazing so it's like accessible for everybody but logic pro is the best because you know like you said it's a one-time 200 hundred dollar fee you don't have to pay for any updates and you get apple support so there's like times if you're True. troubleshooting you could just like call them up and they will help you at yeah. any point there's like there's nothing else like it I mean, the yeah. one caveat is you have to have an Apple computer, but I also think the Apple computers are the best. <laughs> like, Agreed. My Agreed. boyfriend has a Mac, and I mean, not a Mac, um, a PC, and I can hear it almost from this room. <laughs> like, it's so loud. <laughs> it's like a spaceship in there. Yeah, yeah. So I see you got uh, you got a Mac Studio. I got a, a Mac Ooh. Studio as well. How are you liking it so far? I love it. Like, it's like you can't even hear it. It's so quiet. Everything works really fast. Yeah. I mean, it's it's really good. I'm so lucky that I got this one. Yeah. Did you get the which chip did you get? Did you get the the Max, the Ultra? Um, I get the Max. Okay, same here. What about you? I yeah. got the Max. I felt like Ultra was just going to be way overkill for what I needed for. Yeah. I mean, and I have like 4 terabytes inside it. Okay. So it's plenty. I mean, the did you get the studio display too? I did not because I have I don't want to let go of I got a 34 inch curved uh, yeah. display. So I was like, ah, I need the 34 yeah. inches. I get that. <clears throat> yeah. Unless I set it up like I guess I could set it up and then, you know, use one on the side. But then the way I got my camera and all that, I would have to like rearrange everything and then it would block my monitors. So it would. Get yeah, weird. I feel like if you have a good setup, then you just stay. I mean, the. The studio is great because it's just like a box. It's so easy. That's like right. if you had to travel, yep. you know. Yep. Yeah, and it, yeah, super convenient. You can still kind of move it, get you a you know, pack your display up and and keep it moving, or just hook where it up you, to a TV. Where are you located? I'm in Atlanta. What about you? I'm in Las Vegas. Okay, nice. I just watched the Elvis movie, not the. Yeah, <laughs> the I watched day. it last night too. It was dope. So what do you think about it? It's so sad. His yeah, the movie was good. I just, I always find this has been like a long conversation I've been having with my um boyfriend. It's just like if you come from like poverty or just like lower income, and then you just like blow up like rags to riches. Yeah. I just feel like it. You could just see the performers that have blown up. You could just see the difference that the ones that grew up wealthy or at least middle class to the ones that grew up poor and just like how it's affected their career. And it's just, it's, it's crazy, you know, cause like everyone in his life was basically bought except for his wife. Yeah. I mean, we don't really know how true everything is because this is going to end up being a long Elvis conversation, <laughs> but because like she's the only one that's still alive. Right. So like, right. And she, so I guess, she gets the final stamp of approval of what happened. Yeah. But it's it's always really sad. I mean, we see it we see it all the time. Like Whitney Houston and Michael Jackson and so many people were like the families were really like dependent on their career. Mm. It just it's so sad. Yeah. Yeah, it yeah, it was it was definitely sad. Just like, you know. I don't know, man. It, it and honestly, by the way, the static is back. I just wanted to Okay, <laughs> let me switch over to the other okay. mic. And- it, it, so the thing uh, what what was I, what was I about to say? Oh, the crazy thing to me, like watching his story in his career, was that like he was huge here in the states, but he still didn't even really scratch the surface of what he could have been because he didn't he didn't travel outside the states. Um, so it could his it could have been like a whole nother level, um, you know, if it wasn't for his manager and that whole shady situation. Yeah. <clears throat> really sad that he didn't get to do like what he wanted to do and that he was like totally overworked and then you know on pills i think i think you know like we've learned a lot like russ canceling his tour and like i think people are now prioritizing like you know mental health for these artists like because it's a lot of pressure right and especially as artists 
for myself, it's like, you have to seize the day. We don't know how long the work is going to last. We've, we've tried, it took us so long to get here that now we just want to take, 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 take. Yeah. But you really prioritize your, your mental health and your physical health, or you're just going to end up, you know, like Whitney or like Elvis. I know those are extreme examples, but yeah. it's like, you have to. Yeah. That's a, that's a fact, man. I mean, it's, uh, you know, I guess, I don't know, man. It, it's, it's like, it's a lot of people's dream to do this full time, it, but it takes, it takes a lot to be able to do it and, and to make a consistent living at it. Um, so there is that kind of, I guess, kind of balance thing, even though things are kind of out of balance sometimes, like there's times where like, I'm working, 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 working. And then there's times where I'll slow down and then I may be doing more family stuff versus work stuff or just, you know, just kind of chilling out. But um, I don't know. Do you have like a, a like a schedule or like a routine that you kind of use to kind of, you know, take a break here and there or just kind of, you know, stop from from just overworking yourself? Yeah, I've only just started prioritizing my my physical and mental health, but I've, you know, it's because like, I'm, I'm kind of getting forced to. So mm-hmm. like recently, like my leg has been hurting. I don't know if it's my desk. I don't know if it's like just sitting all day. I don't know who knows. Oh. Right. And like, and I've just been like so stressed and I'm like, okay, I need to revamp because I can be doing stuff nonstop and actually be making money. So I feel like I'm like leaving money on the table. I can work harder. I could do this. I can push through, but then it's yeah. just like, not if you're not feeling good, most of the time. <laughs> yeah, it's fast. So it's so hard. So I'm just trying to, that's like something I'm focusing on now is trying to like balance my work and myself, you know, because my boyfriend is also a producer, so we can just be in it all day, just that's like dope. grind. And then, but then all of a sudden I'm like, we don't feel that good. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And uh, yeah, that I think that's hard, man, because... I had to learn, I had to learn to, especially when I was balancing, like before I transitioned into full time and I was balancing the day job and the, the business, like saying no to stuff because it does, you do get that feeling. It's like, man, I'm leaving money on the table and it's like, you're getting paid opportunities, but then it's just like, okay, I need to like really, really focus and prioritize. Like what, what is like, is this adding to the major goals that I've, I've set for the year. And I think it's important at the beginning of the year to kind of, you know, have a vision of where you're trying to go before you start getting bombarded with a bunch of stuff that just totally takes you off track. Um, but yeah, I think it's, um, I think it's important like learning how to say no and being okay with like leaving some, some opportunities on the table just so you can rest up and be able to, say yes to the important things and then be able to give those things, you know, a hundred percent for sure. I don't know who told me this, but it really speaks to me a lot. I wish I could remember it so I can give them credit, but um, they would say, uh, don't say no to the project, but say no to the budget. Mm-hmm. So I will keep raising my, raising my price, raising my price, raising my price. <laughs> but yes. then they keep, they keep paying it. So now I'm like, I have to keep raising it more. <laughs> No, I just seem like such a snob. Like, I think I'm worth this much. But I'm like, it's honestly just because I, I don't have enough time to do everything. That's it. That's exactly why, you know, um, that that happened. I had to raise my consultation fees because of that reason. Like, <clears throat> like it gets to a point where, like, everybody wants the, the time and, and you want to help everybody because we genuinely like helping people. Yeah. Um, but then there's only so many hours in a day. And then we still have our own projects for clients that we're working on. So it's like okay, like either I'm going to be coaching people 24 hours a day or like, you know, I'm going to just, you got, it's, it's supply and demand because it's only one of us. Um, so yeah, you you raise the price, then it slows down and it starts picking up and you're like, all right. Well. It's so funny because like, remember how I said I was like in college, I was like, I'm never singing covers, like not doing that. And then I ended up doing covers. And then when I was starting this, I remember being like, I'm never doing recorded classes. Like, that's so whack. <laughs> I'm not doing it. <laughs> but then people kept requesting it. And I was like, all right, I'll do one recorded class. And obviously, it's been like dreams because they <laughs> recorded version to me. And like, I'm obviously making all this passive income. But I was like, I hate this. The, yeah. My one thing, like, I'm not going to be, I, I shouldn't say this, especially on camera. But I was like, I don't want to be one of those people that sell like $500 recorded class. My recorded class is like 50 bucks. Like, you know. Yeah. yeah. No. <laughs> not going to 
I feel you. I feel you. And that was that was never a goal of mine either. Like I was just like, I, I it was just never a goal. Like I didn't even think about it. Um, it wasn't until like I started sharing my journey on trying to get TV placements and things like that and just putting it on social media. But then people kept asking me questions. So then I did the consultation. I was like, let's just chop it up and I'll just answer all the questions in one sitting. So then I kept getting like the same questions. And I was just like, you know what? My mouth is getting super dry, like saying the same thing over and over. So I'm gonna just like put it in one spot in a form where you could just go here and you all you you have all the answers. You have the blueprint, um, and that's how that's honestly how the the road to ten placement started. But I, ha I had no intention on creating a course, um, but yeah, and that's it's crazy how that how people just kind of you kind of get thrown into it, um, yeah, because more people want help. Yeah, and this I was doing live classes, and I still do live classes, and they're great, but so many people, you know, can't show up to them or want to watch it in their own time, and they were asking for a version, and I was like, whatever, I'll just do it, I guess. <laughs> yeah, indeed. Um, the static is back again. I'm gonna just like every every seven minutes, we're just gonna we're gonna switch the uh the interfaces. Um, so we got we got a couple questions. Let me let me go through uh. Let's see. We answered that one. Here's a good question from Malvin. How do you find your space in a seemed to be saturated niche? That's a good question. Um, I get that question a lot. I just, I don't think it like, it really matters. Like if it's saturated or not, like mm -hmm. I just, I, it, like I said, like, and this is what I say all the time. I, I make, I have my goal and I make my content for, for them or whatever for them mm -hmm. and it doesn't matter if only 200 people see my video if 99 of them are gonna come to my class or if one of them is gonna be a brand that's gonna hire me to create content right mm -hmm. or create videos so I don't really focus on like on that part yeah saturation no I, I, I agree um, because if you do I mean every honestly to a point like saturation is good like you don't want to you don't want to talk about something that that no one you don't want to answer questions that no one is asking. You know what I'm saying? Like if there's like no one cares yeah. about whatever you're talking about, then it's probably going to be hard to to help people in that. So it's just like if it's a market where a lot of people are, it's probably because there are there are a lot of problems and a lot of questions in that specific niche. Um, and then I feel like everybody has a unique perspective um you have a unique perspective that no one else can give because you have a, a unique set of experiences so i agree like don't focus on on saturation but you know focus on what what you're passionate about what you love talking about something that you can just wake up or just in the middle of your sleep just start geeking out on and you know it, there's people who need help with that stuff um yeah. yeah. And I think like for me, like just like an example, like I've only been producing like two years. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm presenting content from fresh eyes. Right. So yeah. I'm really good for beginners because I'm explaining things to them that an audio geek couldn't really explain that well. Mm -hmm. Or I'm also a singer, you know, first. So I'm explaining um, stuff from a singer's point of view. So I think everybody like you said, everyone has something different to bring. Mm -hmm. So. And I, and I always like to think, like, be a conscious creator, right? So, like, the way I found these tips and started posting on tips is because those were tips I got excited about. Yeah. So think about stuff that you've gotten excited about or you've, like, pumped about, and then you can make content about that. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, that's good. Um, that's real good. W, WR Key says, do you guys think Logic will ever create an iOS version with iPad Pro? I do. I think they will. This is an area of frustration for me because I don't know why they're taking so long to, to do it. Um, I think I'm going to try to do something where it's like how Band Lab is. Like, if you're in Logic and I'm in Logic, we can work in the same DAW, even though you're in Atlanta and I'm here. Yeah, that would be dope. Um, but yeah, I think they need to. I was um, a couple weeks ago when I was sick, when I when I had to reschedule this interview, um, I was upstairs in the office and I was working 
I was working in GarageBand, and I was just, I was already irritated because I was sick. But then I got more frustrated because I'm like, yo, it's just like it's not enough in GarageBand on iOS to like do stuff that I'm used to doing in Logic. And I just closed it down. I was like, I'm done. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's I think I think it's needed. Yeah, some 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 form of Logic. Um. So yeah. <clears throat> um. Hopefully they. Hopefully they do it sooner than later. Let's see. Um, let's see if we got any questions. If you guys have any other questions, drop them in the chat. Um, so, okay. So you're at a place now where you have like, you have a solid following um, across Instagram, TikTok, and all of that stuff. You mentioned earlier that you didn't reach out to the brands. You just let them find you. Are you still taking that same approach or are you kind of leveraging your following now and like reaching I've, out to brands that you really want to work with? I've only reached out to one brand and that was just because I really believed in them and mm -hmm. I really, I, I basically only will reach out. Sometimes I'll, it's so rare. I don't really do this that much, but I really wanted to <laughs> trade like, hey, I'll make a video for you if I can use your product, mm -hmm. you know? So it was like, one, one, I don't know if I can, if I can say it. I feel so weird. I, I never know. Like they all, some people are so secretive. I'm so scared to say stuff, but, <laughs> but it was just no. like a brand that like I really, I really believed in and I wanted to use their product because I think they're really cool and like revolutionary. So yeah. that was the one brand that I reached out to and then I did the, you know, the video for exchange for product okay. and then they ended up liking me. And so they, they ended up keep hiring me, <laughs> nice. but that's, that's the only one I don't like, I already like don't have any time and there's so many like music tech is like, a billion dollar industry right like there's so many like you know you go to nam and there's like so many things like yeah. so everyone in there like so many producers are making you know boutique producers are making plugins or there's big plugin companies and there's gear and then there's all the educational stuff and then there's all these new you know apps and all these things and that so like there's so many things so i i mean i've been really lucky that they've just kind of been finding me yeah. and that's the approach i really like to take and that's the approach i take with everything now like with singing gigs you know with producing work with sync licensing mm -hmm. i haven't do haven't had to do any outreach <laughs> everything has come to me and it's all because of social media. And I like, just posted about this yesterday. Like, social media is like fishing. Like, you put out the bait and all the little fishes bite. Yep. So, you know, like, even even getting to connect with people like you and stuff. Like, you know, like, I just wait for people to come to me. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And it, it happens. Like, when you're when you're constantly putting yourself in front of people, um, yeah, people the right people will find you. And it's, it's like, so I started posting about sync, like, years ago, right? And then now like so many different sync opportunities I'm, I'm working on a project right now that was like an opportunity just as a result of me just always talking about sync all the time um so that's dope I, um the static came back again but i want to ask you about sync because i know you do a little bit of sync as well so i would love to kind of hear how you how you got started in that um okay Is it better now? <clears throat> yep. Yep. We're good. Amazing. Um, so, with social media. So people reach out to me and they say, hey, because like, I've only been producing for two years, right? So yeah. even get these opportunities is like a big deal for me. Yeah. And I, you know, whatever. We all have our imposter syndrome or feel like we're not good enough. My, my boyfriend's always like, make good stuff. Relax. <laughs> 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 but like, you know, so like. I've, I've gotten things where people have reached out to me and be like, hey, submit demos for, you know, Target and, you know, all these other things. So nothing has been placed yet, but I have yeah. been getting paid for, like, the demos. And it's cool yeah. because I haven't really had to do any outreach. I haven't had to, like, bang down doors to, like, submit stuff to libraries or competitions or whatever. So right. one of these days I feel like it's just going to happen. And yeah. even if it happens, like a year it's still just three years into me producing so i'm just trying to remind myself like that i'm getting all these opportunities already yeah that's that's cra like that's insane to really think about like two years like i wish you guys could hear what i sounded like in two years like your your production is on point to just be doing this for two years so shouts to you um but yeah like, <laughs> like man you're, you're really just getting started for real yeah, and it's like, it's like I like to tell, open up the DAW and you start from scratch. You have your whole life experience 
before you to bring to the DAW. So like, like I said, I was doing vocal arrangements. So I really understand arrangements and understanding different harmonies and like tension and release. And I've been singing in cover bands for 10 years. So I really understand like what a good song sounds like and yeah. what that kind of would sound like. So I helped me a lot. Yeah. Um, but then, uh, yeah. And but like, sometimes I like have to, I have to remind myself like how far I've come. Like I remember I like bought my first focus, right. Mm-hmm. In like September of the Scarlet. And then one year later they focus, right. The company, like mm-hmm. from LA to like come to my house, and like filmed me in my whole process. And I was like, wow, I've really gotten my return of investment back. Yeah. on that. Exactly. Yeah, that that was definitely worth it. <laughs> that's dope, though. Um, and that's just man, that's, you know, that's just the like a glimpse into the possibilities of, of what you can what you can build um, by just being consistent and putting yourself out there. Like it was consistently <clears throat> showing up producing literally like seven days a week. You know, I was making 30 minute eight bar loops like every day, putting myself out there, putting myself on on the on the web to be scrutinized and to be attacked i'm sure you've gotten a fair share of that too absolutely so yeah and then you just learn and then all of a sudden you know i really like i really like the really cheesy motto like fake it till you make it and then you just keep faking it and one day you're like wow i'm actually a sufficient producer yeah that's super dope um that's dope so let's talk let's talk business so You've uh you've reached the six mark the the six figure mark in your production business, right? Yes. How how does that feel? Number one, since you just started doing this a few years ago, and then like what are the the different streams that you have that are that are you know helping um you know bring in income for your business? It feels it feels good. Um, it feels great. Obviously, like the best. <clears throat> I get to make my own schedule. I work for me. You know, I feel like doing anyone that gets to that point where like your business gets to the point where it's like actually profitable. Cause yeah. I've had, I've had two failed businesses before this where I was like, okay. never made my money back <laughs> that I invested. So like to finally be able to be like, cool, this is working like that. That's alone. And I think anybody that's an entrepreneur that gets to this point, is just kind of like, it's more of like a relief, yeah. but then it's, like how long is this gonna last? So there's a lot of like anxiety around it. Right. <laughs> but um, so I've just been trying to like really save and like when I first started gigging, somebody told me, Sabrina, no gig lasts forever, and that mm-hmm. really me and maybe gave me some PTSD. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like always like my six month fund like as as my like lifestyle gets more luxurious, I have to keep saving more and more for that yep. six month fund. But yeah, I mean, my main streams of revenue is the things I decided two years ago is going to be the two things I'm focusing on, which yeah. is working with music tech companies and building my school. And yeah. some people are like, you're not a music producer, really. And, I, and I'm like, whatever, you can say what you want, because I am, I have to produce music for this. Like, yeah. if I'm EQ or if I'm showing like a vocal harmony stack or if I'm, like I make music and now I've just been putting those out on beat stars just because like I've already made it. So it's not like whatever. And if it doesn't make money, who cares? But that's really how I want to make my money because I wanted to make the music I wanted to make. I didn't want to work with artists and stuff like that. But I know I wanted to do that. I could have been doing that because I was six months in already getting hired to produce for independent artists. So you really have to remind yourself like the haters on the internet, they're just haters. (laughs) Yeah. And and foolish ones at that because it, it's so it's so ridiculous for someone to say that because that's like going up to LeBron James and be like you're not a basketball player because if you break down LeBron James like LeBron James like billionaire status right now right if you break down his streams of income and what makes up that billion dollar net worth um or I don't know if it's like one bit I, I don't remember exact amount but basketball is like the smallest one you know the big ones are like the brand deals, the partnerships with Kia, AT and T, Nike, um, you know, it's it's all the other stuff. The the TV and film production company he has, like it's like he took basketball, like yeah, basketball is what he does. That's like you know that's what he does. That's how he kind of built the platform that he has. But then he leveraged that and then turned that into other things that generate more money than than basketball does. It's no different being a music producer you know you you do music and then you kind of use that 
um, to build a platform and and then to branch off and to, to do other things that all revolve around music. It's all related. So that's super dope. Yeah. Thank you for saying <laughs> you let these little things on the internet get to you and then you have to remind yourself like, no, this is crazy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's uh, yeah. Most of, most of those people haven't accomplished too much. So uh, <laughs> you get you just learn to ignore them. Um, that's super dope. Let me see if we got uh, got a couple other questions. I think the static is back on your end as well. Oh, okay. Let me see. Um, Eric Van Vogel says, what are some golden tips as to how best find the music projects? Well, I guess we heard from, from Size that a lot of the stuff has just been coming to her. So it's like all of the, like the artist stuff and all that stuff, that it, they just been kind of kind of inbound just coming coming to you from the content yeah so i would say like my best tip is to like let them find you mm. so think about and a lot of times it's because you don't really know who you're posting for right you don't really know who you're you don't really know who you want to work with right mm -hmm. so you make content for the people that you want to work with for instance like if you want to be a producer for like a country music producer you should find country singers that are just posting you know guitar and vocals on TikTok or on instagram and then being like hey this is what it would sound like if i produced you you know like really and then you show that content so it's like you really view your page as a digital portfolio of what you can do so when people find you they're like oh they can do this they can do this they can do this i want to hire them yep Pretty much every single time I posted an eight bar loop or a video of me doing a production, being like, oh, duet this or whatever, I'll get a bunch of inquiries like, hey, can you produce my track? Can you produce my track? Can you produce my track? What are your fees? What are your fees? Yep. It's all just because I put out that video. It's just yep. like show people what you can do and show the right kind of people what you could do and then they will find you. Don't do the spamming unless you have something really good to offer, you know, like you know, for example, like you reached out to me, you have a very good following. I know you know your your stuff. Like I'm willing to take the time out of my day to do this with you because Thank it's an you. equal. You know, I want to build my relationship with you. Yeah. But there's so so many people like, you know, and I'm sure you get this too. They'll reach out to you and you're like, yes, I want to help you, but like, oh, there's no great exchange in value here. <laughs> exactly. So it's like, so spamming. <laughs> I don't think spamming works. And like. I used to spam people so much. Like if I go back and look at my SoundCloud messages, yeah. it's sad, sad, sad times. And probably yeah. now those people want to actually work with me. <laughs> yeah. Yep. It like I was reaching out to people with like, you know, 8,000 SoundCloud followers. And I'd be like, Hey, I'm a singer. Can we collab? Ignored, ignored, ignored. And why, and why shouldn't they? Like they probably get so many messages, yeah. you know? Yep. It's a fact. I did the same thing when I got on Twitter back in the uh, the Twitter Prime days. Um, yeah, I was spamming like crazy, man. Like every every tweet was a link to my website and Beat Store and all of that stuff. It was it was sad, but um, you know you learn <laughs> you learn and you grow. Yeah. And um, you know you you quickly realize that everything um, everything is about value, giving value, exchanging value. Um, you know, it's not valuable for someone to just click your link and listen to your song, especially if they don't know you. Like, what what are they getting out of that other than... And especially if they're getting hundreds of those requests, right? Yeah. Like, yep. and then it's like, well, they can't do that, you know? <clears throat> yep. Yep, that's a fact. Um, so, yeah, figure out a way to... Uh, figure out a way to, to showcase what you do and, and, and draw people in and, and make people care about uh about what you have um super dope um let me see tim bird says i hope this fits with the topic but how does one go about pricing for their services without overpricing and undercutting yourself mm, i like this question a lot <laughs> yeah that's good i would say the first thing i like to do always is try to get a sense of their budget mm. and just be like, what What are you looking to spend? Because then you at least have like <clears throat> somewhere to base your mind off. Because, you know, sometimes they'll be like, oh, um, I only have $200. And then you're just kind of like, okay, well. Yeah. <laughs> or sometimes they're like, I have six grand and you were only going to ask for a thousand. Right. You know? <laughs> so at least try to like gauge where they're at. And sometimes they, they won't tell you. A lot of times they won't tell you. Yeah. And then, you know, then you say your rate and you just got to stay confident with your rate. And my dad says, um, my dad told me also when I was younger, like, if you're willing to negotiate, you have to be willing to walk away. Yep. So you, you can walk away. I like to say something like, well, 
you know, I charge between um, 1000 to 2000 um, Can Can you meet me somewhere there yeah. or whatever? So, or like, you know, so let's say they're like, uh, I want to decide what's your rate. And then I'm like, okay, what's your budget? We don't have a budget. We want to hear your rate first. And I go, okay, well, my rate is $1,000. Mm. And they go, oh, no, like we were only trying to do $500. I'm like, okay, well, you know, my rate is $1,000, but I really want to work with you. Can you meet me somewhere in the middle? Yeah. And then you can try for that. <clears throat> but yeah. generally, like the best, the people that you really want to work with are the people that are going to be like, okay, I'll pay your rate. Yeah. Or here's the rate. Because I, I, I'll tell you, like, the people that I've had to negotiate with, they're just not really, like, the best to work with. Because if it's, like, if they're nickel and diming that little that much, then it's, like, how good is their business to begin with, you know? Yep. Yep. I've, I've learned the same thing, um, you know, doing this doing this for a while. You know, it's – I don't know why, but it's it, – I think it's a mentality thing, too. But, you know, the people who are kind of cheap or, you know, scared to invest in themselves or – you know, not willing to do whatever it takes to if you have to save up and pay someone what they're worth and, and what they're asking for. Um, usually those end up being the most difficult clients and they want everything for nothing. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, you're talking multiple edits and just super picky when the people. Definitely, yeah. And definitely like outline that too. like say yeah. like you get two edits, you yeah. get one edit. Because that means that they have to be clear in the beginning, you know, like, this is what I got for you. And that's it. Because you can have, like, nightmare experiences. Yeah. Especially, that's why I didn't want to do producing for artists. Like, <laughs> if I produce for an artist, I'm going to be like, this is the track. Take it or leave it. <laughs> <laughs> I feel you. Your static is back, too. Okay, but... let me switch. <laughs> But yeah, like and yeah, have have a limit on revisions. I learned that, man. It, yeah, it's crazy. Um, yeah, and then the people who who will pay your fee, man, some of the easiest clients ever. Um, you know, um, don't don't be scared to you know to to charge what what you're worth. Um, and then there was there was some. Oh yeah, yeah. You mentioned something about negotiation, being able to walk away. The person who can walk away, it has the power in in negotiation. If you can walk away and be okay. Boom. It's uh, the ball's in your court. Also, like a mindset thing. It's, it can't be <clears throat> my one thing. This is my one way to make money or this is like this is the deal that whatever. It can't be like that. It's got to be if it, it it's not this, it's something else. Something else will come or they'll come back again. Yeah. You know, oh, it's, it's, you really just have to be very confident with your decisions. Yeah, that's a fact. Um, so that's dope, man. So. Wow, you went from like zero to sixty like super quick on on this production uh, business thing. So, man, what? So your I guess now your your biggest goal is to continue to to build your your school and things like that. Continue helping other producers. What are um, what are some some other goals you have like in the the foreseeable future? Well, I really want to because like for me, I'm I take up my experience. Like if someone had I've been in many studios and if somebody had just like invited me you know hey do you want to try doing this on your own or let me show you some stuff so that's really why i wanted to do my school and i really want to make it affordable so it's not just for like you know rich boys you know <laughs> anymore <laughs> like <laughs> so I, I want to try to make music production um more accessible and then i do really want to get into sync more and i kind of feel like i want to get it for like kind of the wrong reasons but you know, at what, least for what, now. What are your What are your reasons for wanting to get into sync? Okay, I'm just gonna be a complete concerned <laughs> about this. It's just for the clout. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not mad at it. Like it, it, it. Listen, like being able to partner your brand with you know a network, an NBC, CBS. Like it adds credibility. And I like, and I tell producers that all the time. Like. I mean, you get you get a sync or like you know you you'll end up landing one of one of these commercials or something one of these days. Like it just people take you more serious. Like you're not gonna like when someone asks you your fee and you say you know two thousand dollars and they know you've you've done something for a Target or an Adidas or a Fox Sports or whatever. Like they're not gonna question you. You know what I'm saying? They're like, yeah. well, geez. it's just. I mean, I feel like you like the wrong reasons because I know it's going to be a short lived thing. Cause it's like, you know, when I was, when I was catering, when I, you know, when I was younger teenager catering weddings and I would see the wedding singer and I'd be like, 
oh, I just want to be the wedding singer, you yeah. know, and then you're the wedding singer and you're like, oh, I just want to, you know, I want to be singing like, you know, international weddings or like, you know, destination weddings. And then you do that and then you're like, oh, so I just feel like it's like, it's going to be one of those things that like once I do get it, because I'm sure it's just a matter of time, right? That's what I tell everyone trying to get it to sync. Like yeah. people are video watching videos all day, every day, everywhere in the world. And they all need music for that. So yeah. It's a matter of time. And then once once you do get it, yeah, it's, it gets impressive for a certain amount of people. But then other people are like, well, you know, who cares if you're on that one random Hulu show that one? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, that's hilarious. Oh, yeah. I want to get the Super Bowl. And then you're like, oh, and, you get the Super Bowl, and then you're like, cool. <laughs> yep. It was like, so I generally tell people to not chase clout. But for me, it's like when I get those emails, like, you're just a fake producer. And I'll be like, tell Hulu that. Because I was exactly. on there. Oh. <laughs> I was on their new series that aired last fall. Take that. Seconds in their transitional <laughs> from exactly. Having... Yep. There you go. That's dope. So yeah, I'm sure it's only a matter of time before it, something lands. So that'll be dope. Definitely let me know when that happens. That'll be exciting. <laughs> Thank um, you. Yeah, no doubt. WR, yeah, we answered the uh the logic pro question. We said yeah, we think they will eventually. We don't know when. But they need to, because GarageBand is not doing it for me. It's crazy. All right, size. This was a dope conversation, but I'm gonna let you go because I know you got a lot to do. I got a lot to do too. So um, let the people know, like, what you have going on. If you have any classes coming up, where they can find you, follow you. Let them know. Yeah. So I have um, I'm Instagram sides and TikTok sides. And I have a social media class that's recorded if you want to watch it. And if you've seen this video and you want a discount, just send me a DM on Instagram and I'll send you a discount. Dope. Um, yeah. And that's pretty much it right now. That's nice. what I got. That's what's up. Well, thank you. I appreciate you taking out the time to, to hop on here and have the convo and, um, you know, share some gems with the people. Hopefully this information has been helpful for you all. And um, keep it up. Keep crushing it. And excited to see, you know, what else is in store for for your career as a as a producer slash singer and all, all that dope stuff. Thank you. You <laughs> no, Sorry no. for all the Oh <laughs> uh, no, nah, it's all good. It's technology. We that's literally what we do for a living is like deal with audio glitches all day. So <laughs> dope stuff. Just another another day in the studio. So dope stuff, man. Everybody, make sure you like, share, and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.